So the engine in the P47 has a lot of controls. It has four levers right here, it has these two switches right here, and it has this handle right here. And you need to know how to use all of these to control the engine properly. So first let's go over these two levers. The big one is the throttle, and this black one with the P is the propeller control. These are the two that you are going to be using the most. So the throttle controls how much gas and air goes in the engine. So the more you push the throttle forward, the more will go in and the more powerful the engine will run. Now whenever you move the throttle, it's going to move this gauge here that says manifold pressure. This is just the pressure of the air inside the engine. So obviously when I push the throttle forward, there will be more pressure. Next is the propeller handle. This changes the angle of the blades of the propeller. So whenever you push the propeller forward, it decreases the angle of the blades going against the air so the propeller can speed up. And when you pull the handle back, it increases the angle so the propeller will s slow down. Now when you adjust this propeller lever, it will change this gauge here on the RPM meter. So basically when you're flying, you're just going to mostly be using these two controls to slow the plane down and speed up. Now whenever you want to slow down, first you bring the throttle back and then you bring the propeller back. And when you want to speed up, it's the opposite. First you push the propeller forward and then the throttle. I'm not sure why you have to do that, that's just what it says in the manual. So the number one thing is just to keep both of these in the green. As long as you keep your throttle in the green and you keep your propeller in the green, you'll be good. You'll notice that both of these gauges have a blue section and that is for cruise mode, which I'll talk about later. Okay, now let's go over the mixture handle. The mixture handle is the red one. Now you don't have to mess with this once, you just kind of set it when you start up and then you leave it. There's four positions. First is the idle cutoff. That just cuts off all your fuel and that's for whenever you're shutting the plane down. Then there's two positions here for auto, auto lean and auto rich. Auto rich is in DCS what you're going to be in the most. This is just kind of for normal flying. And then auto lean will use less fuel, so it's kind of meant more for long range cruising but usually you don't really do that in DCS, so you're probably never gonna need to use auto lean. And then the last setting is full rich. So in the plane, the thing that controls the amount of fuel going to the engine is the carburetor. So if the carburetor breaks, what you can do is put it in full rich, and it will basically put a constant amount of fuel in your engine. The problem with using full rich is that it uses a lot of fuel and kind of wastes it, but um, if you're in an emergency, that's all you can do. So in summary for mixture, you basically just leave it in auto rich the whole time. And then the last one here is the boost lever. So basically what this does is it, the booster um, can use exhaust gas from the engine to spin a turbine that will bring more air into the engine. Now you're probably saying that's great, but what is the point of it? Well, as you can see, whenever I adjust my throttle, it changes the manifold pressure. But whenever I get to a really high altitude, the air up there is just so thin that even with the throttle all the way forward, the manifold pressure just won't be able to go up enough. So I'm demonstrating this right now. I'm at 30,000 feet, and you can see my throttle's all the way forward, but my manifold pressure gauge, it can't even get to the green section. So this is where the booster comes in. What you can do is put the boost lever forward, and you can see now my manifold pressure gauge will come up. Obviously, at low altitudes, there's no point of using the booster, but once you get to high altitudes, like 10,000 feet and above, then the booster will become necessary. And whenever you're at really high altitudes, you're probably just gonna have to throttle all the way for forward, and you're just gonna be flying with the booster. The only thing to note about the booster is that it's kind of delayed a little bit. It's not super responsive, so that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, so now I'll talk about cruise mode, which is what I mentioned earlier. If you're going on really long range cruises, and you don't wanna use as much gas, what you can do is first put your throttle and propeller into cruise mode. So you can see I put my manifold pressure gauge to, cru to the blue for cruise, and I'm gonna bring my propeller back to put that into cruise also. So now that these are both in blue, I'm going to move my mixture handle back to auto lean. So now the plane will use less gas and be better for cruising. If you wanna go back to normal mode, you just put the mixture back to auto rich, and then you put your propeller forward to the green, and then you can put your uh, throttle forward. Okay, now let's move on to these two switches here. So the bottom one um, controls this gauge here. You can see when I move the switch, it moves it. So this controls the oil cooler shutter doors. The oil cooler shutter doors are these doors right here. So basically this just controls the temperature of the oil in the plane. You can see the oil temperature by looking at this gauge right here. It's this top one. So as you can see, the oil is a little bit hot. You want to be it in the blue. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this a little bit forward to the open position. And you can see my oil, it's already coming down back to the blue now. So the oil cooler is not something you're going to really mess with constantly. It's just every once in a while you should check this gauge and just adjust it. Okay, now we'll go over the intercooler, which is pretty similar. The only difference is that this controls the temperature of the air going to the carburetor. You can see the gauge for it right here. It says carb air. You basically want to keep this gauge in the colored section. So you can see if I want to cool it down a little bit, I'll just open the intercooler a little bit here. And you can see the gauge should go down. There you can see the gauge is going down now. Basically, in summary with these two, you just check these two gauges every once in a while and adjust it to be right. So last we have the cowl flap lever here. What this does is it controls these flaps that can open up to cool the engine down. You can see the temperature of the engine using this gauge here. Basically, you don't want it to ever go above like 250 degrees. Now, most of the time when you're flying, you're just going to want to have them all the way closed, especially at high speeds. However, whenever you are at low speeds, if you see the engine getting kind of hot, you can open the, this up a little bit to cool the engine down. Also, um, whenever you're on the ground, you should have the flaps all the way open so the engine can be as cool as possible. And whenever you're taking off and landing, you should have the flaps about halfway open. There's not any gauges to see the position of the flaps. You just see how open they are by looking out the window. You can see they're about halfway open right now. The last engine control I just want to mention is this little box right here. So I already mentioned that you use the propeller lever to control the angle of the blades. However, if that breaks for some reason, um, what you can do is use this switch to manually decrease or increase the angle. So you can see when I decrease it here, the RPM is decreasing. And when I do this, the RPM increases. If you don't want to do that anymore, you can just click up to put it back to manual and then this lever will control it. So if you are flying in a combat situation and you need to give yourself some more power, first you can bring the propeller all the way forward and bring the needle up to the red line, which is the max. Then you can also bring the manifold pressure past the green if you want to, but you can only do this for a little amount of time. Now you can see there's this first red line here. If you keep the needle before the first red line, I've heard you can fly like this for 15 minutes before you need to go back to the green. If you bring it past the first red line into this area, um, then you can only fly for five minutes is what I've heard. The other thing to note is that if you're gonna fly past this first red line, you need to use water injection. The water injection is to make sure the engine doesn't overheat and you do that by clicking this button on the top of the throttle here. You can see that when I start injecting water, it increases the pressure a lot. So I'm going to bring the throttle back so it doesn't go past the second red line. That second red line is the absolute maximum. So keep in mind, once again, when you're flying this powerful, you can only do it for five minutes at a time so you don't overstress the engine. Also, you should note that there is a limited water supply in the plane that only lasts for about 15 minutes or something like that. There is one more thing to note, and that is that there are actually multiple versions of the P47 in DCS. So if you are flying a more modern version like this one, then the water injection button will look like this. And on these modern versions, you don't have to hold the button down. You can actually slide it in this little slot so it will stay held down like that. Thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you later.